Hello and welcome to another episode of Spicy Decks and welcome to Camera Score Studio. Joining me today is Alec. Thank you. Maybe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was the question if there was actually ever going to be a second episode because we weren't sure if I was going to survive. I did, and now Eddie, who actually enjoys spicy foods, is uh, not here. And we've got Alec, and do you enjoy spicy foods? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe even less than I do. Oh, okay. Regardless. Uh, spicy Dex, Spicy yes. Dex, yes. Spicy foods, <laughs> no. Yeah, so like many things uh, in, in life, I mean, there are spicy foods. There are also spicy decks. Uh, I mean, you've got, you know, just a, a deck in Commander that does some off-the-wall exciting things. Alec is a fantastic deck builder, as you probably noticed on a lot of Close Quarters episodes. And we've got an especially spicy deck for you today with an unexpected commander that I really never thought I'd ever see a deck built around really in commander. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's just talk about the premise of the episode really quick, just how things are going to go. Okay, so what we have in front of us are each five cards, one of each basic land type. Uh, what we are going to do is when it is time for us to ingest uh, one of these nuggets uh, with some spice. Uh, we are going to shuffle it. We are going to pick a random one. And let's just say I did this and it was red, which would not be a good one to start off with. <laughs> Get that out of the way. <laughs> oh, it'd be better than that. Yeah. Uh, because uh, on our little uh, spice cam right here, you can probably see we go from uh, what probably is like the least spicy. I mean, when it comes to, you know, like a nice refreshing water, you know, that, that you know, blue, that, that's definitely not all that spicy. So we've got over here and I'm actually going to, I should just pull these over here right now. <laughs> we've got Folly Coffee Hot Sauce. Uh, and actually I tried to make sure all these are from Minnesota as close as I could get. I believe Lola is the only one that's from Iowa. Everything else is from Minnesota. Uh, but this one's smoked to be uh, it says um this hot sauce is a flavor enhancer so not uh something that is going to destroy your palate so hopefully that's not lying to us because we haven't had this one yet uh, so years. hopefully that's a good starter one uh, then we've got crybaby craigs which is lovely had that last time uh with eddie and just just a very delicious hot sauce that's gonna be at plains but it's still uh, i'm hoping hotter than that one because this uh, i'm hoping this one's not too hot as i'm saying <laughs> after that we've got this one's got a pig on it lost capital um another bad investment that's a great name <laughs> so yeah that's a that's a fantastic one uh this one i believe is uh chili manzano which i looked up and that's uh decent on the scoville uh level then after that we've got hell raising hot sauce uh last one we had a different one uh and this one i believe is called sweet suffering it's habanero heat infused with sweet pineapple uh so probably a little sweetness to it but habanero is very hot uh, definitely getting up there in the Scoville rate, uh, ratings, chart, whatever you call it. I don't know. Sure. Level. Then we haven't even got, had any spice. We haven't yet, but I'm trying to talk as fast as I can to just get this over with. <laughs> I'm sure you're trying to stall and be like, yes, and this is how they made it. Uh, Lola's fine hot sauce. We had them on last time, uh, but this time we've stepped it up a notch. <laughs> so, uh, so Alec has a little bit of uh, uh, bragging rights over Eddie, depending on how this goes, actually. This is Trinidad Scorpion. Second hottest, uh, and so that will be with a swamp. Uh, and then the last one is actually one that you cannot draw out of these, luckily, I mean, or unluckily. This is going to be, uh, give me this last time, uh, <laughs> double take, Carolina Reaper, which is the hottest thing I could find at the store. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is uh, that's how it's going to go. The golden dig will be saved for last. Uh, we cannot draw it. But it'll be interesting to see which of us draws what first and, you know, throughout. Uh, do you want a hot one earlier? Do you want a hot one later? What are you, what are you hoping for? No. <laughs> <laughs> not the no, above. Not, none of the above. I drew a waste. <laughs> <laughs> it's none of them. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, stack the deck a little bit. Indeed, so. indeed. So uh, I've got uh, five questions, or six questions, and uh, each time we're going to start off with the hot sauce. So uh, I believe it does say on our sheet right here, though, before we actually get uh, into this, uh, we have to do Spice 1. But first up, let's talk about the commander that you built this deck around. Let's just talk about what the commander is, what it does, uh, and then we're going to start talking about what the deck actually does. So who is the commander that you built this spicy deck around? Sure. So um, my deck uh, commander is Hogak, Risen Necropolis. And uh, so it is an 8-8 eight, eight with Trample creature that's five uh, colorless and then blue-green filter uh, two of those. Blue black filter? Sorry, blue black Golgari. filter. I mean, yeah, this Golgari, makes... yeah. <laughs> Again, this is not Eddie, this is not Simic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no Simic here. <laughs> um, and uh, Hogak is interesting because you can cast it from your graveyard, um, but uh, you can't cast it using mana. Mm -hmm. So you have to, it, and it also has Convoke and Delve, so it mm -hmm. means that you have to uh, either tap creatures that are currently on the battlefield to cast it, or delve cards out of your uh, 
uh, a graveyard. It's got gotcha. you. So utilizing those two things to actually get your commander out, you literally cannot just say, I tap my lands for mana, unless your lands have to be creatures as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting take. And obviously, it has seen a lot of you know constructed play across you know legacy and, and modern when it, it was a thing. Break modern for a bit. I think it was, it was banned for. Uh, I think it's still banned currently. Mm -hmm. So you know it, it certainly made waves. Um, but uh, you know I always thought it was uh, interesting to kind of see if it could play a role in Commander, mm -hmm. given its uh, you know the stipulations of how you need to cast it. Yep. Um, and so you know kind of hit a sweet spot with this deck. Absolutely, and I'm not going to spoil anything yet. I have played against this deck a few times, and I, I will just say I can confirm it is quite spicy. <laughs> but not as spicy, potentially, as one of these spices that we're about to take. So let's get things going with number one. Okay. All right, so we each shuffle it up. Yep. Each pick one, and I pray I don't get a Swamp or Mountain to start. Yep, here we go. Right, you ready? Ready. Do you want to cut? No. Oh, you don't <laughs> want to change my lock? <laughs> All right. Ready? Forest. Flames. Okay. All right, so... Looks like you'll be starting off with the very delicious Cry Baby Craigs. And maybe you'll be the one crying after that. I and probably will. I can see the spice. <laughs> and I will be starting off with Lost Capital, another bad investment. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, and you might want to shake it just to, I mean, I shook them beforehand, but just in case. Sure. I mean, unless you just want, you know, all, you know, non spice and salt vinegar or whatever they put there. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe that's the right choice. <laughs> maybe, who knows? <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get How like, much are we like, doing? I mean, I, I try to try to get like a, a decent amount. It's not coming out. There we go. Oh gosh. Oh, that's oh, far that's too much. Super. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is not good. Okay. All right. <laughs> so now um, I obviously cannot get a force anywhere. You cannot get the planes anymore. Dang. Best of luck. Best <laughs> Cheers. Luck. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be bad for me. You? That's planes. Okay. Yeah, right, that's just, yeah. All right. Shop in the yeah. middle of the road. Okay. So. Now that we've started our spice journey, oh, and also I should have mentioned, we do have uh, some Minnesota um, glasses which do have milk. If you do need it as an emergency, you're just, you know, just need it, go um, for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we also have water as a backup too. Here we go. Okay, question number one. What does the deck do and what are its goals? Yeah, sorry, I'm still just trying to get through. Uh-huh, yeah, good luck thinking with this. Yep. <laughs> so, at the core of the deck, um, I'm really leaning on Hogak to kind of like push me over the finish line here. Mm -hmm. um, very much see this as like commander damage, uh, you know, focused kind of deck. Sure. Focused on getting Hogak out. Now the problem is, is like Hogak as an 8-8 is great mm -hmm. um, in a lot of situations, but it gets eclipsed pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, you need multiple creatures on the board. Um, it, it's hard to get an 8-8 through for commander damage. Or a single Ur Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the goal then is to try to get Hogak out as quickly as possible. So mm -hmm. I call this kind of like a hyper aggro. Um, so like just the, the main focus is like get in online really quickly and win through that commander damage. Mm -hmm. route. Um, I particularly like this commander oh, now no. that I know that it works occasionally. Mm, I, I don't. I wouldn't say occasionally. We'll get. To, I think we'll get to some of the stats here later, but right. like, I wouldn't say occasionally. Um, for a few reasons, uh, you mm. know, it's uh, it, it was a fairly unique deck building experience, oh, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. I'm sure. The amount of hours that you put into that, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's a it's a real challenge to pilot because once it kind of hits the battlefield, mm -hmm. you kind of are limited on like what you can do in the mm -hmm. game once once Hogak gets online. Sure, and it's just kind of I mean. When I first saw that you're building around this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, like, just as it is, a seven mana commander is incredibly, like, you can't get that out all that early in a lot of decks. Like, right. it takes, you'd have to have an absurd amount of ramp to actually do that. And also, your commander is, it's an alien with trample, which is impressive, but there's no other abilities, right? right. It's, just, it's, a, it's just a vanilla creature, essentially, with trample. With trample, yep, yeah, and that's it. And uh, when I'm leaning on that to get through for com commander damage mm -hmm. and end the game quickly, I, I mean, even like a 2-2 two -two mm -hmm. blocker is going to disrupt my game plan. Absolutely. I mean, have to yeah, operate around you're, that. you're hoping to get, what, three hits in, essentially, if not less, and then, yeah, I mean, that's what you're trying to, to hope for. Yeah. Gosh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a part of the spice was just like stuck in my gum that like came out. Oh, and like, then ah! it kind of came in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, so, you know, and th that's a part of the allure of playing the deck. Oh, yeah. Which I've found though is just like the chaos that ensues when you get Hogak out on turn like mm -hmm. one or two. Oh, yeah. 
all of a sudden your opponents have to scramble a little bit and figure out like, well, okay, now I have to interact with this early with mm -hmm. this big giant commander. What can I do? Yeah, and, good luck. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know the the you know the chaos player and me is just like, ha ha, it's yeah. great. <laughs> you know, other players might just throw their commander down quickly to try and chump block it even be like, sometimes, then sometimes it happens. You yeah. have to. I mean, that, and that's kind of the thing. Like, if you're going up against your whole back deck for the very first time, you might not expect that to happen and to be like, oh, okay, threat assessment changed immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that player is playing this commander, but my gosh, Hogak is in play already and I haven't even played a land. Yeah, if you want to play, if you want to be arch enemy, like uh, in the first couple of turns of the game, mm -hmm. you know, that this is the deck to play. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. Okay. I think, uh, you see, you seem to handle that very first one pretty well, huh? <laughs> Crying inside. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Tears are inside. <laughs> Good flavor though, right? Yeah, I like that one actually. Yeah, it's good, it's good. You know, I okay. mean, yeah. Like, Going to move on to number two? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Shuffle up again. Oh, Each of us still have uh, Mountain and the Swamp still in play. <sighs> all right, you ready? ready. Oh! <laughs> no, no! <laughs> oh, I was like laughing at first. So I was like, oh no! But like, you know, gonna be a laughing way that I saw mine too. <laughs> oh, that's karma. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, again, the only non-Minnesotan spice, uh, because, you know, everyone says that the spiciest things do come from Minnesota, apparently. Uh, Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, all natural, Trinidad Scorpio. Now, if, you, if you're at home right now, uh, which you, or wherever you're at, uh, you probably have an internet connection, I would assume. <laughs> uh, so at some point, just look up, like, Scoville-level peppers or whatever, and Trinidad Scorpion just right underneath the Reaper. I'm just, just going to move this. Oh, <laughs> you're getting ready? Closer. You're preparing? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, whereas uh, I think this one is, like, around, like, 32,000. Uh, this one's probably around there, too. This one's, like, 2 million, or, like, 1 to 2 million. So I'm not going to taste anything. We're, so yeah, we're, we're dead. <laughs> we're dead already, so... Um, oh, I need to shake no this. No stopper on that one. There's no, oh, there is, oh, no, there's... I, I think we ran into that last time with oh, Lola's. No. Lola's? Oh, Lola's, you jerks over there in Iowa. It looks stuff. so innocent, too. It, it really doesn't oh look gosh. like... Oh, my gosh. Thank you for giving me a heads up. There's no stopper oh, on this yeah. thing. Oh, gosh. Oh my oh. gosh, okay, all right, all right. I don't need that much, but I have it. Okay, good luck. Okay, I'm not gonna do that much. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> I say that you and then it just falls that. out and... <laughs> okay, all right, uh, to, uh, to Mono Black. <laughs> yeah, Mono Black, here we go. <laughs> just oh, gosh. Gosh. Yeah. I'll just wait. I think there's gonna be a late here. Okay. You know, I'm just, I'm gonna. You're this, 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 this not. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Is this a slow burn? Ask, ask the question so I can get through this. Or did I like completely just mit, like look up wrong on the? Ask the question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to get you. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Provide some background um, info on the deck. Some inspiration, history. What what inspired this deck? Yeah, so if you've watched some of our Close Quarters episodes, uh, you might notice that like I tend to like to take deck concepts from like other, uh, you know, constructed formats at like Legacy mm -hmm. or Modern or Standard, and I, I just have fun like converting them into like Commander decks, mm -hmm. right? So like my cycling deck was like that, Eggs was like that for sure. Um, and this particular deck was inspired by Landless Dredge. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what is that in modern or is that in? Um, I believe that's in legacy, legacy? primarily. Okay. I think it, it had some play in modern. Honestly, I can't remember. Not right too many now. formats can can handle no lands in your deck. I'm essentially, <laughs> yeah, I think I am too. <laughs> um, so you know, watching you know some old tournament coverage, you know, mm. just like was really impressed by like how these decks work. Mm -hmm. Had a, a very unique take on mm -hmm. like approaching the format mm -hmm. and just like re thought it was really cool how they could operate basically off of zero mana whatsoever. Oops. That was entirely the plan and their benefit. And, um, you know, dumping a ton of cards in their graveyard and navigating to, you know, a win that way. So mm -hmm. um, definitely wanted to like try to emulate that as much as I could in a commander deck. Like mm -hmm. obviously you, you'll see the deck list like it obviously doesn't operate off of zero lands, well, but and, and because those formats can use four ofs, right? right I mean, like, right. yeah, so yeah. and like there are certain elements that that work more efficiently in a smaller deck size compared to others. But mm -hmm. um, I tried my best, and so like I think in this deck there's like a total of like six like actual usable lands mm -hmm. plus fetches. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, felt like this was the best. Um, 
balance that I could kind of like muster. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty absurd. You have a commander that, I mean, you can't use lands, got your commander, yes. But you have yeah. a commander that is seven mana and you have only six lands, like technical lands in the deck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's absurd. There are plenty of time, plenty of games with this deck where someone will walk by and they'll like have people with 20 lands mm -hmm. each and I've got like one sitting in front of I me. I think the last time I played against that deck, you literally ended the game with one land in play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I don't think is, is too uh, abnormal for that. And that deck. was a situation where someone star extinctioned my other deck. That's <laughs> true, <way>. yeah. <laughs> So that was particularly debilitating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mass land destruction, it's single land destruction. That happens to just get rid of half your lands. Yeah, I was like, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, how are you holding up right now? Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> did, did you turn up the temperature in your... A little bit. Goodness. Um, um, yeah, I mean, like your eggs deck, though. Your eggs deck is, is I can't remember the, the person's name who originally built the eggs deck in um, Standard at the time. Was it Standard at the time? Um, Legacy Modern? That was modern, that, the, as far as the... But, yeah, yeah, but uh, your um, Brea deck is built after an eggs, or you're, you're inspired by that eggs deck, this Hogak deck, which is inspired <laughs> by Manalus Dredge. Yeah, you know, hey, like... I I'll, mean, <laughs> are we going to see eight rack in the future? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> rack, yeah. I try to push the envelope a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, like, as far as, like went like how this has like evolved mm -hmm. um you know i built this deck initially like an initial draft uh during COVID, like at the start of COVID, mm -hmm. and like i knew what i wanted to try to accomplish and uh, but i wasn't sure it was really going to be like super efficient it wouldn't mm -hmm. work out that well so COVID was nice because it allowed uh me to test the deck as we were playing mostly online sure point. the amount of time that you had to dedicate to that and not leave anywhere and just literally stay there for two years and work on a deck and do nothing else right that's what well it was mostly just like this deck has a lot of very strange cards that you don't see really in other decks mm -hmm. and so like i didn't really want to invest in those particular cards uh -huh. before i knew like this was actually going to work oh 100 and it ended up turning out the deck really didn't work at first like i had less lands in this initial mm -hmm. one i was really really focused on the landless component how many lands <laughs> did you have i think it was like one usable land <laughs> <laughs> and so it really didn't work. It so was yeah, just it, so. It took, it took some. It took some. Uh, it took some, some practice. Tuning, yeah, so tuning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Figuring out what worked. Um, but uh, you know, I was glad uh, after having some time and learning some lessons. Mm -hmm. of, after playing the deck for a while, like mm -hmm. like turning out this version of it and being yep. like, yeah, okay, so this is actually at a level where the consistency is like I'm decently happy with it. Yeah. And and it seems to actually work most of the time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh my god. I mean, every time I've seen it, it has been, <laughs> again, I'm like, other people at the table, you might not realize this, but um, yes, there's some scary commanders here, but that one we need to get rid of first. <laughs> it's helpful to have a disclaimer. <laughs> that for sure. eating with Tramble that you can't cast with mana. <laughs> get rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else about the inspiration for the deck? Are you ready to move on to spice number three? Brain is question? like gone at this moment. Okay, so. all right. Let's, I think I think if we can keep, you know, we got the spiciness in our mouth right now from one of the hottest ones, right? Yeah. Oh, did you, you didn't even take any. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Eddie. You're not the only one who can handle spice. We're doing great. <laughs> Inside crying. Again. Exactly. <laughs> so. All right. Spice number three. I think now, see, these have to be easier, right? Because we're going down until the very end. Then we go super, super high up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Oh, starting low, okay. All right, I'm going, I'm working my way down the hill. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I would've gotten this, then that, I would've been much more upset. This going I don't know this way is better. Worse, Cause like, I'm going oh. down, I'm pinball. <laughs> 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 All right, so you get the, uh, like yeah, you got the Folly Coffee Hot Sauce, which again is habanero. It's habanero, but, so but with we'll coffee, see. so like, hopefully for your sake, it's not one yeah, of our why hottest. Is there a stopper on this one? I know, <laughs> and Lola's doesn't have it. Lola's, could Consumer feedback, you mean a stopper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I've got the hell raising hot sauce, sweet suffering. Hopefully it is sweet. All right, let's see. We got a stopper? There's a stopper. Look at that, Lola's. Look at that, take notes. Oh God, that's not working. Oh, you're really going at it. Okay, now I gotta go at it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I took notes from Eddie's, Eddie's uh, yeah, episode. That's just, the wrong way. Seeing him just like dump things. He's yeah, just like, oh, this got a stopper, let's take it off. And just, yeah, I'm just gonna drink out of it. I'm Eddie. <laughs> Eddie's not here, we can blame make Blame him already. Blame Eddie. Yeah. Everyone blame Eddie in the comments. We should have worn our blame Eddie shirts today. We did not. Oh gosh, I should have put, I should have just taken up. Oh no. Oh God. <laughs> oh, no. All right, here we go. Good, Good luck. luck. Good luck. <laughs> There's some sweetness to that. It's definitely hot, though. Mm. Okay. All right. 
That one's nice. That, okay, yeah, that's nice? That's habanero, yeah. Well, like, that one's not like yeah, lime. Nice. That one is literally just it's an enhancer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're gonna love that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right, so it's an enhancer, not not a, not just gonna beat your I mean, you get some up front. Off, so. I think habanero you get more up front. But... Okay. See, this one's more of like a building late, and now it's just killing my tongue. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay, question. <clears throat> And I'm just gonna, I can't concentrate enough to, to try to not just read this off the sheets. I'm just gonna That's be able to That's fine. Uh, I get it. Yep. From our games together, it seems that you were able to get Hogak out consistently turns one to three. That's right, everyone. Turns one to three. A commander that costs seven mana that you cannot use mana to cast. Yeah. You know. What makes that possible in this deck? So, yeah. So, like, the reason why this works as it does is, um, you know, purely, you know, like, there's. 80, 70, 80 percent of the deck is focused on getting Hogak out, mm -hmm. right? So the main components that you have to meet, obviously, are the dredging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having to dis have at least five cards in your graveyard when you're ready to cast them, mm -hmm. um, or two or more creatures on the battlefield, or some combination of yep. those, right? So, you know, having the deck focused on those, you know, is really focused on efficiently meeting those mm -hmm. requirements. And when you say literally like 70% of your deck is focused on that, it literally is like 70% because you only have, again, six lands that cannot help you essentially yeah. with Hogak. The other ones are fetches or whatnot, which can help you with Hogak because you can delve them. Yeah, yeah. Everything else, I mean, actually, you have Dry Darker too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is a creature <laughs> land. Yeah. So, but like, you know, given the, given the, and like it works because, or it seems to work because, you know, the, the focus of the deck anyway is to deal commander damage mm -hmm. with Hogak. So if that's your game plan, why should you dilute your deck with any other cards that don't meet that goal? 100%. And like, so if I were to like put more lands in the deck, sure, it might smooth out some draws, but it might actually um, detract a little bit from being able to cast Hogak so early. And because... being able to, yeah, get it, because that's that's pretty needed for Hogak. You can't have other people getting their defenses up quick enough for you not to be able to get a couple of hits in, right? Exactly, away. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've so... got, I mean, technically, like, Again, you're hoping to probably take out opponents in, I mean, yeah, you probably, and you could probably take a player out one shot, I believe. You've got some ways probably like Berserk or something like that. It's usually two shots. It's usually two shots is what, is what you're aiming for, but three is probably the most you want. But still, with eight, with three of the players at the table, that's a, a, essentially potentially nine combats. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, you need Hogak out that early, and the fact that you can get Hogak out on turn one three is absurd, and I've seen it multiple times. Now, I don't think I've ever seen you turn three Hogak. It's always been one or two, and usually it's one. <laughs> well, it's kind of controlling the, the mulligan decision, too. Oh, 100%. That plays a huge factor. Yep. Um, but so, like, kind of going down the list, you know, the deck is full of ways of feeding your graveyard. Mm. So there's elements of the dredge, which is kind of what the deck is named after. Yep. Um, so pretty much have almost all of the dredge cards. I mm. think there's only one that I've removed because it only dredges one card. What's the the best dredge is probably, what's the cave troll? Gar, yeah, Gar, Golgari uh, Grave Troll. Grave Troll, I think it's, there you go. That dredge is six, six I think which it is. Which yeah. almost pays for Hogak, I mean, it pays for the, the five in Hogak, or yes, if you, yeah. like you, you just put it in the graveyard. It never, it never goes to the commands. I guess that's a positive. Yeah. Hogak is always going to cost seven, essentially, unless your graveyard gets exiled with Hogak in. So, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, essentially, with that, you can always ensure that you're going to have mana up for Hogak, essentially, because you're just like, oh, okay, I dredge it, or I find a way to discard it or whatnot and get it back again. Yep. And as long as it stays in my graveyard, it's repeatable mm -hmm. every draw step. Yep. So and there are other there's I mean there's dredge what four five six there's probably three. It ranges from like two two to six, six essentially. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So wizards print more dredge cards. That'd be great. Yeah. Just <laughs> rounds. Okay. I would love it. It'd be amazing. <laughs> I don't think they will. They're probably not. They probably learned their lesson. They're like, oh gosh, we thought this. <laughs> who would want to get rid of cards that you're self milling? Who would want to do that? Yeah. Specifically for my deck, right? right, right, right yeah. Absolutely. Um, in addition to dredge, like I've got a bunch of uh, cards that like allow me to discard for myself. Yep. So like, think of like the classic example of Putrid Damp. Yep. Um, you know, just and it doesn't like I don't have to pay mana into it. I don't need to tap the creature. Mm. Just like discard. So Putrid Damp will just allow me just to basically dump my entire hand as soon as it comes mm. out of the battle. And with, you know, a discard out like that one, too, that also plays into the Convoke, right, essentially, because then you have a creature that can also tap, so exactly. it can help you in both ways. It's kind of yeah. like Psychic Talk in that way. It's like both sides of it help. Yeah, that's so a like... Weird example, I guess, Psychic Turn talk. one, like, Putrid Imp comes down. Mm -hmm. um, that's half of the uh, Convoke requirement, yep. and I can basically discard my entire hand, and there's the five-plus cards in the graveyard. Yep. So, you know, that one particular card, you know, uh, 
solves nearly all your solves damage. most of the problems yeah. of the deck of getting Hogak out anyway. I mean, and I, I don't know if this is further on in the, in the actual thing. I apologize if I forgot that it's further on, but there are basically no decks out there that run one with nothing, and your deck is one of the very few ones that runs one with nothing and loves to have one with nothing in the opening <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the cards where it just like it allows for a lot of crazy things to happen. Uh -huh. It's just like, yeah, this is a one mana ability to basically dump any cards that I have in my hand mm -hmm. into the graveyard. That's yep. that's exactly what Putrid is kind of there to do anyway. Yep. So yeah, it's it, it it works very well. In this it's deck. just hilarious because <laughs> it's like Magic's like best worst card, and it's like Hogak's like I love that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, of course, I've got more cards that like are self-milling. Yep. Uh, you know, take for example, um, let me pull up an example. Mm -hmm. Just trying to stall for time as you get yeah, yeah, the hot yeah, sauce right now. You know, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so like Seder Wayfinder yep. or uh, Stitcher Supplier is actually oh, the best, Supplier is incredible. best version because again like it's it's a creature that's on the battlefield yep. it, it mills three cards actually it, it's better than the self discard mm. ones because I'm not sacrificing cards out of my sure. hands. Sure, you can use those hands for other things. Yeah. The graveyard. Cards so hands, yep. those those cards are amazing. Um, and then like also like you have to consider too that there's certain cards that are just like cheap or free. Sure. So take for example like uh, the some of the bobbles like Mishra's bobble, yep. Urza's bobble. Yep. Um, uh, what's what's the name of the um, oh, Once Upon a Time is actually oh really fun gosh. in the deck. Oh my gosh! I didn't even think about that. That's <laughs> so, hilarious. <laughs> like it might not even find something, but yeah. at least the card goes to the graveyard and you cast it for free. Yeah, one hundred percent. So um, yeah, so that's a, that's a huge part of you know feeding the graveyard and making that half of Hogak mm -hmm. castable that early. Well, it's like and, and you do also have some forms of ramp in the deck as well. Like I believe you've got Mandorks in the deck too that can help you cast your other spells. They can't help cast Hodak, Hogak at Hodak, <laughs> Hogak in that way, but right. they can help you cast Hogak, Hogak by convoking any creature. Yep. So essentially, all your creatures are Mandorks in the deck that you're making. It's just that those can also help you cast other spells. So yeah, you've got sure. I mean plenty I'm sure of turn one. Ramp essentially. In the oh deck. yeah, pretty much Which, every mana dork that's you know in green. one mana. Elves of Deep Shadow, uh, Land of War, all those essentially. Yeah, they're all Pop. in the deck yeah. because uh, it, it provides an extra mana for, like I said, those other spells that you mm -hmm. might actually just need to cast. Which still might even be a slow turn for you though, if you're like, oh darn, turn one Land yeah, of like, War. Oh no, what are we gonna ah, do? <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> Only turn two, oh gak. <laughs> Which is kind of like funny because it, it kind of puts some people like who haven't seen the deck sometimes like on the wrong idea. They're uh -huh. like, oh okay, he's got mana dorks. Yeah. That's understandable, but it's like, no, like, like that sometimes just ensures that I have a turn two Hogak. Yep, 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 <laughs> essentially. Yeah, it's like, bolt the bird, you need to do you it. You need to bolt the bird! <laughs> Does everyone have a bolt? <laughs> So yeah, so and like that that plays into the that creature component uh, for for convo convoking, mm. um, uh, and then like there are some f interesting cards uh, that are creatures that are like free. Mm -hmm. So take for example, um, oh my gosh, the Lagats. Well, what's <laughs> the one that, like, or whatever. Is that the one that gains four life for someone if they control four, or is that someone else? Uh, Sorry. That's Sky Shroud Cutter. Sorry, I'm skipping um, right now. I'm. No, uh, that's that. That's the that spice falls has into the does so, it. <laughs> yeah, so Sky Shroud Cutter, I was right. Uh -huh. So that one is just as long as I have a forest. Yeah. Um, it can enter the battlefield, uh, not pay its mana cost, and then each of my opponents gain five life. Yep. Now, in a regular game, that's horrible. It's, it's like a 2-2 it's like two -two or whatever. Yeah. I'll get my opponents eventually. Yeah. I mean, how many attacks would that be? Like yeah, eight attacks to actually make up for yeah. that, essentially, if you get through any time? But for me, since I'm focused on commander damage yeah, oh yeah. anyway, like, that's it just doesn't free matter. That's yeah. a free mana dork for you into play to help get Hogak out, essentially, exactly. is what that is. That's exactly. that. Yep. Gosh, I love it. And yeah, the, the life game matters nothing. So. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, no matter at all. That's awesome. So in general, like kind of like leading up to this, like. This deck kind of needs two mana at some point mm -hmm. to kind of like really truly operate. Like yep. I've done it off of one mana. Like you said, there have been a few games where I've been able to make that work, but yep. usually I need two mana at some point of the game. Like yep. it's even if it's just like a Lotus Petal, yep. that's usually enough to get me over the edge and then cool. I can operate off of one after that, Absolutely. which is fine. And the Lotus Petal helps you in the graveyard as well because yep. then you can delve it for Hogak as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and obviously I, I love uh, what's the, the chatter is that <laughs> that card, that, that's fantastic that because you can flash it back. Yeah. So that's essentially two dorks for Hogak. And at first when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, Chatter. Yeah, I remember that when I was a kid because I think that's like Odyssey or something around then when Scrolls yeah. were, were getting big. And I was like, oh, it's awesome. Chatter. I was like, oh, no. Hogak <laughs> is coming out. <laughs> oh, no. Well, and sometimes those are even better than um, like the mana dorks, for example, yep. because um, not only does it provide the creature that can convoke, but mm -hmm. it also puts the spell into the graveyard. Yep. So 
sure, I'd love to, you know, keep it in there to flash back. Sure, but yeah, you, but more, so, more so delving it away. Just that's essentially two mana for Hogak right there. Yeah, that's exactly. Fantastic. So you know, just it goes back, keeps going back to the mm -hmm. efficiency for for that. Like Vitality Charm is amazing too because yes. not only does it do the same thing, mm -hmm. but it can also provide like a quick bump to Hogak if mm -hmm. I'm like this close to yep. to finishing off an opponent. Yeah, Vitality Charm, that card you see in every Commander <laughs> yeah. deck out there, you know. <laughs> So yeah, just, just finding those like niche pieces to kind of make the deck work efficiently is, mm -hmm. is really what this, this oh, and deck And there are so many niche pieces that literally see play nowhere else in this deck and I absolutely love it. Um, last question before we get to our next spice because I think I'm finally coming down fine right now. How oh, about you? Are no, you uh, fine? Uh, you fine? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm fine, as fine as I'm gonna be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how often do you get a turn one to Hogak? <clears throat> yeah, so we, met, we talked before about like uh, ensuring like the efficiency and like mm -hmm. the the deck was actually going to operate. So before, again, like before I, you know, put the order in online to, to get mm -hmm. the cards, um, I... You goldfished it I a million times. solitaire the deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was over like a hundred times. That's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I made notes. I made a spreadsheet of uh, like different different factors, different lines of play, like what mattered and what... This is next level <laughs> spicy decks. <laughs> There's math involved. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, I was pleasantly surprised that, like, I could get a turn two Hogak probably, like, about 50% of the time. Yep. It was close. Yep. But then even, like, turn one Hogaks was somewhere between, somewhere around, like, 10%. Which is crazy. I was just like, whoa, you know, this mm -hmm. actually, you know, makes this work. And, like, I, I think with a couple of cards I've added since, mm -hmm. um, have, like, improved the efficiency, mm -hmm. too. So. And, you, and you literally can't even utilize a card like Jeweled Lotus. That will not help you at all. No, not like, at all. It no. doesn't help you at all. Like, that, that's like, oh, yeah, sure, I got my commander out turn one, so, you know, whatever, with Jeweled Lotus. I got my Urza out. It's like... Okay, but can you get a hurt? Can you get an Hogak out on turn one without Jeweled Lotus? But the funny thing is that the fact that I even considered the card to be played just for the fact that it's a zero man zero, spell yep. that can be immediately put Go into to your the graveyard. graveyard. That's hilarious. It's in the maybe board. So. Oh, I can sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just a different level of just like bragging to your opponents. Be like, all right, Jill Lotus, crack it. Don't, Don't spit out my commander. <laughs> Del has, has the turn. <laughs> I should do that sometimes just for the you walls. Should, you should, absolutely. <laughs> all right, all right. Now I think it's time to get to number four. <laughs> All right, I've got my I've got my big ones done already. Yeah, Top yep, I got yeah, these two little. Oh I, yeah, that's right. You're completely. Unless before this started, you like put in like two mounds of two swamps in a mine. Right in the middle, left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. You going high or going uh, low? Right in the middle, I guess. Let's go. See. I'm going right. high. I'm okay. going very low. Uh, All right. So I get the Folly Coffee Hot Sauce, which I was promised is pretty mild. I mean, it hit you at first, but it's good. Yeah, it's got a little habanero kick. It says this. it's perfect on eggs, great on everything else. So ice cream. Eggs. Yeah, I mean it's a it's like a breakfast. Say... It's a breakfast. It's a coffee place. Like okay, well, you would I'll, put on your eggs. I'll choose to believe them. Okay, all right. I mean, I'll, I'll try. I'm not gonna go like make eggs right now, but you know. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna I brought use... the deck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> if you bring Brea out, I will put this hot sauce all over that deck. <laughs> What you got there? I'm gonna make sure I get at least as much as you did. At so least. people don't make fun of me in the comments. They're already making fun of me in the comments. See the I'm big sure. seed. There's this oak. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh no, I'm, I'm mine. It's oh okay. I was I was like, oh gosh. I thought now I'm just seeing things. All right, habanero All right. bros. Cheers. Oh, I flipped mine over in my mouth, and now the sauce is on my tongue. Oh no, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> Oh, a really good idea. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> nope. So you got the, um, mm -mm. what is this one again? This is the um, Hell Raising. It says sweet pineapple though, right? A little sweetness in there, no? I have some sweetness. <laughs> and it kicks you in the teeth. It's like a Sour Patch Kid, but with <laughs> hot, hot sauce. First they're sweet, more then like they're spicy. War, more like a warhead. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that is That is delectable. This is not hitting me at all. Yeah, good. Good. I'm glad for you. How you doing? Yeah. Okay, let's take our time on this question. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the plan after Hogak comes down? So we talked about, all right, literally turn one or turn two Hogak most of the time. Yeah, yeah. You get it down, what happens? Yeah, so like... After, we talked your, about opponents, <laughs> after your opponents go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the challenge, right? Because, you know, it's it's easy to get hated out of the game because if, if you got three opponents, mm -hmm. right, or usually in a four-player fight. Sure. And, you know, just, you know, it doesn't take much to get Hogaf off the table. He doesn't have, uh, you know, inherent protection besides mm -hmm. just being an 8-8, eight, eight, so, you like know. Vanilla except for Trample. That's, yeah. That's it. Yeah, it is so, a Colossal Dreadmaw plus two. Pretty much. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> so you know, like it's it's very it's very um, vulnerable to lots of different kinds sure. of removal, and so for this deck, there's uh, you know a couple of ways to combat that. You know, obviously, you know with uh, you know 70, 80 percent of the deck focused on getting Hogak out the first time, mm. that also in inevitably helps with getting him out the second time too. Mm. So the dredge is why that's uh, particularly important. Why those cards are so valued in this deck. Mm. <laughs> How are you doing over there? <laughs> that one kicks right away. I think away. I could use a little more of this, actually. Oh, I'm sure you could. <laughs> you know, just so just take this. Rub it in. Keep going. Keep talking. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. This is delicious. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to oh, throw this? Uh, see? <laughs> you said a little. Oh. All right, keep talking, sorry. Yeah, so the dredge is particularly um, helpful for that because anytime I draw, I can just choose to dredge instead as okay. long as there's still one in my graveyard. And that'll just continue to feed my graveyard, graveyard mm -hmm. so that way I've kind of kind of have that mana banked, per se, for yep. when I need to recast Hogak. 100%. So usually those first initial turns after casting Hogak the first time, I want to prioritize dredging as much as I can. Absolutely. Um, kind of just, yeah, just banking, making sure like you're like this is probably gonna get dealt with. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I need to have mana ready to get it back out because I have to keep swinging right away. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen that like we Absolutely. had that game before where you removed Hogak, came out right the, mm -hmm. the next turn right after. So that's kind of the goal because like again, mm -hmm. the more the turns go by, mm -hmm. the more your opponents are gonna be out of range for mm -hmm. what Hogak can do in combat. And I believe in that game, I did have a Night Howler as well in play that I just had to get down yeah. right away because I was just like, I need a blocker. And then therefore, it's <laughs> and that being, getting, and that, bet, that was relevant too. Because it kept getting bigger because it's like, you have to keep dredging. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that did change your mind not to attack me, attack someone else. Because it's yep. like, even my Night Howler, I think it was a 2-2 two -two at the time. It's like, well, that's six damage instead of eight. And then that changes your combat math and being like, now I got to hit Mitch a guaranteed three times essentially in order to take him out versus going for someone else. I can do it in two most of the time with certain things that can help. Hogak, get there. Yeah, exactly. And that that, that, that that plays into like what I was going to talk about next is um, besides, you know, working on getting that graveyard back up, mm -hmm. um, the other elements of, of like what I'm trying to do, and there's like a certain number of card slots that were just kind of free, mm -hmm. um, was just all about pumping Hogak or making him um, hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. So um, you've got cards just like mutagenic growth, yep. um, which are great because it pumps Hogak a little bit. You know, if, if you want to take turn Koyak into a two combat yep. win over an opponent, um, you gotta add five yep. damage some way or another, so that's two right there. Um, Berserk. Three? Three. Hmm? Would it be three? Mutagenic Growth is plus two plus two. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I have, to, I have to add five combat damage somewhere. Overall, oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm always thinking combats. about like, I'm always thinking about, okay, like get to half, that's 11. Yeah, yeah. so there, okay, yeah, you're right, correct. Five, sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> this is where math is involved, and I'm like, yeah, 16 plus five again. is 21. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also plays into the, like the, what we talked about before, and that it's sort of a free spell as long yep. as it's got a target, target on the battlefield. So, yep. Um, easy to dump into the graveyard. Berserk is great because that turns Hogak into like kind of just like a win now. Oh yeah. Um, like again, if you have another way to pump it, then it just doesn't that just double its power essentially, yep. right? So, so yeah, you could literally one shot someone with that for two mana if you have yeah. That well, it only becomes a sixteen. So well, no, I mean, I mean, with something else though, like like another oh, like what's yeah. your like you, you've got a, you've got a dredge card that helps out too that pumps as well, like the branch something or whatever. Yeah, yeah. First time I saw that, like oh that's cute. And I'm like oh no, Hogan's a two shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which one? What's that one? I, I think it's like branch woods. I should know this deck a little bit more. Yeah, the it's it's all right. I mean, Mulder vine cloak. Mulder vine cloak. <laughs> Not at all about branch wood. <laughs> yeah, but the relevant that's like I plus three plus, plus three. Yeah. <laughs> plus three plus three. Yeah. So most decks aren't using it, even though it does dredge. Other things are going to be more effective in dredge decks for the most part, but like that one, it's like, no, this is perfect for Hogak. It turns Hogak into a two-shot KO and it dredges. Right, right. Um, otherwise, you've got like other effects that, um, you know, are more focused on protecting him, like mm -hmm. blossoming defense. Yep. Also a plus two, plus two, but Absolutely. more focused on like the hexproof components. Yep. Um, and then like, funny enough, Malakir Rebirth, mm -hmm. you know, in the event that Hogak were to die to something, it can come immediately back using the spell, but it's also my sixth land. Yes, I really <laughs> wish deck, that that so. would see a reprint because that thing used to be budget and like now it's like three bucks or something like that. Well, I think all of the Zendikar flips They're starting are, to go up, yeah, because like, they're just so, so flexible. Oh yeah, yeah, they're super useful. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so that 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 those play a certain number of slots just to allow me to be more efficient in combat, mm -hmm. or protect Hogak, or just in, in in the you know easier sense of just like help recasting him. One hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, last spice. We know what we're taking this time. Yep. Then, uh, well, all right, we have two more questions. One is an always question, though. This is, uh, yep. I, I can't talk right now. Spice, let's go. Planes. I've got the forests. All right, so I got the crybaby. Cra I think this is the exact reverse of the first, isn't it? Yeah, first and last, first and oh, last. Yeah. So crybaby Craig. And then I got the I another bad adventure. investment, so. <laughs> the big on it. I love this one. Okay. This one was thick, you said, right? I, oh, 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 did you shake it? <laughs> you know, I thought it was thick. Maybe I uh, Maybe it made it a little easier. Oh, Craig, Craig, stop her. <laughs> Where is the stopper? You and Lola. Did the other one have a stopper that you did with Eddie? I don't remember. The other crybaby? Yeah. Probably, uh, probably not. I mean, I don't think they changed it. Oh, all right. Okay. All righty. I remember really enjoying this one. <laughs> Cheers. <Good luck. laughs> but of course now I'm on my way back up, so mm. I'm gonna enjoy as much. Oh, and there's there's a seed. Mm. Oh, super vinegary. It's probably the, the liquid that came out. Yeah, because of the first <laughs> yeah. part you poured, yeah. Okay. So, question number five. What is the future for this deck? Um, as in like what kinds of cards in the future are you hoping to see? I'll be printed, that would be a great addition. So, like, um, you know, upcoming sets we've got. I, guess, I mean, I can. <laughs> I'm not going to try to speak for you, but I might have to right now. I just can't talk. <laughs> well, it's spice. That would hit you pretty hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or building <laughs> on top of everything else. <laughs> just a pile of spice is building. Um, exponential factors. Uh, but, like, we've got. What Brothers War coming up this year, right? And that yeah. is probably going to be an artifact heavy set. Yeah. And there's definitely some artifacts that can play really well with Hogak. And, and I mean, I highly doubt we're going to see Dredge, but I mean, like, you never know. We yeah. might see Dredge in a, in a set that's upcoming at some mm -hmm. point. So, what kinds of cards are you hoping to see that can really work well with Hogak? Like, when it's printed, you're like, yep, that's it. Add to cart Hogak now. Yeah. So, I, you know, I actually spent a lot of time thinking about this because it's it's hard to introduce cards into this deck just it's mostly because like there's finally two yeah and there's just like very few cards that need that like even like own a spot anyway sure just purely based off of like things like converted mana cost sure. or uh you know power level that kind of things so, i mean you, you think you see like like how far how far back i had to go just oh, to yeah. like find relevant cards for this 100 percent. <laughs> it just kind of goes to show like you know the, this this deck has very few things that i can actually consider Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to just again continuing to <clears throat> improve the efficiency, um, you know, either in the form of like helping me get Hogek on the battlefield faster mm -hmm. or more efficiently, or, or just like doing more to protect it mm -hmm. or um, you know get creatures or cards in the graveyard quicker or faster. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> like we like we talked about before, you know, I would love to see more dredge cards. <laughs> <laughs> dredge. Uh Free creatures that gain my opponent's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally fine with any of those cards. I'm sure Wizards has that right in the uh, top like, of this. This is great. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everyone loves Dredge. <laughs> well, like, I mean, like the, the fact that I have to like concede certain uh, certain Dredge cards mm -hmm. just to fit in the deck anyway. Yep. Like um, uh, Necroplasm and like Golgari Brown Scale, they only Dredge mm -hmm. two each. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's not really efficient when it comes to this deck, but mm -hmm. the fact that I just feel like I need to include them for their effect. Mm -hmm. um, Don't you, get, you have Dark Blast in the deck, right? I have Dark Blast. Is that, is that Dredge that's 1? Dredge 3. Is that that's Dredge 3? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So reason, it costs 1. It, it's minus 1, minus 1, but it's Dredge 3. Yeah. And that actually, I was like, usually you think that card is just like useless and it's just like just there for the Dredge. But I thought I saw you <laughs> save yourself with that and also get an extra combat damage. It's just, it's an initial point of combat damage essentially if you have to trample over something, right? Yeah, like, totally. I, I never even considered that. I'm like, oh, yeah, you just have that there for the dredge. It's like, oh, wait, this is actually useful. Yeah, it has relevance in the combat. So, stage, yeah, I mean, just like, I, 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 I'm excited to see if we'll ever get dredge again. We'll see, and that would definitely help out. I mean, again, it's such a specific niche deck that I, I know the second that we see one of these cards spoiled, you're just immediately going to send to the group and be like, Booyah! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're all going to be like, no, his efficiency <laughs> went from 10% turn one to 12. Well, even just like in like, because it seems like the Wizards is uh, interested in reprinting like older effects, this even like in co Commander mm -hmm. Precons, and sometimes it's like one or two ofs, yep. but for a deck like Hogad, one or two of is perfect. Oh, absolutely. Like it just improves the efficiency of one or two cards. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
A hundred percent. Um, <clears throat> you just gonna stall now, just uh, yeah. This just last question. <laughs> you don't want to see this bad boy right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I was surprised in Modern Horizons two that they reprinted another two mana cost creature that can discard like Putrium does. Mm -hmm. Cabal Initiate. Oh yeah. Um, that was a great addition to the deck because again, that's those are one of the ways that I can just kind of dump cards Absolutely. out of my hand. And no also convokes cost. too. Yeah, Yeah, it's also convoke. So, um, you know, I hope that they'll continue yeah, on yeah. that trend. Is Wild Mongrel, is that another Wild one? Mongrel, yep. another, uh, yeah. Another that one just another. changes colors, right? <laughs> Essentially, is that what that is? Or... Uh, oh no, that's it, it, one? It pumps itself. It yeah. does? I thought there, there's one that just like, discard a card, Change its color to whatever you want. Well, play. I think the worst is is the uh, is the is the fairy that like gives itself minus three minus. Oh. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can do the effect. So but... you're just like just like as this really tiny creature it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, you just, you care about the discards. You just <laughs> minus twenty minus one or minus twenty. One. It's less, yeah. uh, it's less toughness. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but like, or Olivia's Dragoon just gives itself flying or whatever. Yeah. But they're still relevant because sure. of Sure, I mean, so. yeah, absolutely. If you um, need to chump block with it to save yourself from someone's big flyer, yeah, yeah that can help. Like, I would be are, very surprised if Wizards decides to print another one mana cost that can do the same effect because sure. Future Dim just has a huge effect, I think, even currently on Legacy. Yeah, really. Because, because that, it, it, it fuels the reanimator decks. Sure, that um, makes sense. So, for, for the same thing. So, like, I doubt they would do that, but. Happy to accept any There'll other There'll probably be two. more, too. Yeah, because, yeah, Olivia's Dragoon's not too far back, I yeah, believe. Yeah, that one's been a couple years since yeah. Yeah. Is that Magic Origins? It might be Magic Origins. I don't know. It's It's um, been a little bit. I mean, Might have been one of the Shadows of Innistrad, I think, one of, one of those. So, yeah, it hasn't... It, it's been around for a little bit of time now, but not too long, so... Yeah. Definitely some potential for those. Yeah, okay. so any more of those would be would be amazing. Absolutely. Um, card draw effects? Yeah. Like, at the zero to one mana is, is always good for this deck because it allows me to continue to dredge. Mm-hmm. Or just a lot of times in this deck, I'll find myself with Hogek on the battlefield, but zero cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. And while I'm still happy to accept that sure. <laughs> that end game, um, I much prefer to have like two, three or four cards yep. in my hand to be able to like do some of the combat 100%. Uh, components. So, um, you know, that's why Mishra's Bobble and Urza's Bobble oh, are yeah. in the deck because you know, they're free to, to kind of draw. No Waker's Bobble though, I assume. Uh, unfortunately, no, because that'll cost one and then two mana to actually activate. Turn two ramp is too slow. And what happens if I draw both of my lands anyway? <laughs> that, that, that can fetch for it. It's like That's the useless. You, it's like the land that you can even help you get Hogak out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, not, not, not helpful at all. <laughs> Hashtag blame Alec in the comments below for not using Wake Bearers Baba. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so yeah, any any like efficient card draw in that mm -hmm. level is great. And more free creatures, like if they bring back the Legat. <laughs> Series, I'm, I'm sure they would totally. The, everyone just <laughs> crying for the gods. Like I got to have a forest, and someone has to have an island for the creature mm -hmm. to be free. Yep. Perfect. That's amazing. I'd love more yep. of those. Or another dryad arbor, maybe. That, I would. But perfect swamp. Love. Put a swamp for a dryad arbor. That's probably yeah. a horrible idea. That's a horrible. Bird. They would never do that. <laughs> like, oh, this is cute. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is a bad idea. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> Or how, yeah, or uh, um, Lotus Petal as well. Another Lotus Petal is what you need, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it just says treasure. <laughs> it's zero mana. It just says treasure. You could put the spell in your deck. <laughs> you could put treasure in your deck. Any number of treasures in your deck. Oh, oh gosh, that would be insane. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> no. All right. Um, okay. I think we've gotten to the, the final part. Are you prepared? Are you ready? No, but yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay. So uh, again, there's no, we're out of cards. We already got drawn all of our cards. Uh, now all that is left is the golden pig. So we have the golden pig statue, of course. Of course. And with that, we do have uh, the Carolina Reaper from, I believe it's Double Take. Uh, yes, Double Take Salsa Company. This is going to kill us, most likely. Yep. Um, this again, uh, the uh, Trinidad Scorpion, I believe, is like. 1 million to 2 million, this is like 2 plus, so. So if this was even near 2 million, we got off easy compared to this, so. Barely. Okay, shake it up. Prepare yourself. I guess I should probably let you like just do this first, you know, because you're like watching me. I feel like it's more, no, you're, you're it's more nerve wracking to like just watch me slowly pour mine and then have to pour your own. Oh gosh, okay. Jeez. There's, oh no, I got a seed. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no. I wasn't even looking before those until you actually said something. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Carolyn Reaper. Ah, uh, goodbye, world. Yep. Goodbye, cruel world. Peace out. Mm. Good night, sweet prince. I flipped it. Mm hmm. Well, gee, oh. 
Oh, that just hit you right away. <laughs> oh God. Okay. All right. You're able to talk? Somehow. <laughs> you just did? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Question number six. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have to talk very much through this one. Oh, yeah. No! What is the gold pick of the deck? <laughs> so, tough decision. You tough to speak. You do have the, the milk option if you need it. So do I. So there's a lot of cards that play a pretty important role in the deck. We talked about a few of them, like whoa, oh, Lotus Petal, Putrid Dim, etc. Yeah. And I think the card that I'm actually really liking right now is Currency Converter. Which. I saw it last time. I think last time I played it the time before. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh my gosh. Well, and it, that, this is a brand new card from um, Nuka Panda, right? Yeah, the Commander X. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, as a one out of spell, obviously great. Uh, artifact, perfect. But the main thing is that it uses cards I'm discarding mm -hmm. uh, to turn out either treasures or 2 2 creatures. Either of which can be relevant for you. <laughs> Yeah, perfectly relevant. Like, I don't see the charges very often because I'm not often discarding lands. Mm -hmm. But in a pinch, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But the best thing about it is, unlike cards like Bag of Holding and things like that, mm -hmm. it doesn't keep the card Which, when I yeah. choose to activate it. Like, once I choose to activate it, it goes into the graveyard. Yep, Bag of Holding Exiles to, or whatever. Right? Yeah, and I get to choose whether or not the card goes underneath the currency converter anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's tough, huh? <laughs> so... It's it's just proven already to be just such an, an engine for the deck because mm -hmm. not, not only do I get then extra, extra value out of cards that I'm discarding, yep. which is you know a whole element of the deck that I'm doing already, but then the fact that it turns out those two twos that can feed into the convoke. Oh yeah, it's just amazing. So it helps the deck, you know, survive longer into the into the turns. Um, it, sometimes I'll even use the two twos as blockers mm -hmm. in emergency cases. So, um, currently absolutely loving that card. Yeah. And it's it's it stands out right now compared to the others just because there's so many that I would potentially put on that pedestal. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like the amount of work that I saw it do and the last time we played was just absurd. Like, when that came down, I was like, oh, that's, that. yeah, that, that feels like what that would work with it. But, like, I feel like that thing overperformed based on expectation. I would assume. Like, you like you put that in, like, you had high expectations for it, but, like, I still feel like it had to reach above that. Even See, and it actually like, happened. Just, like, the amount of how you can turn out with that is absurd. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's amazing. So you're just trying to be done with this, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's wrap. Uh, uh, gold pick, gold pick. Yeah, yeah. This, this. All right, we're good. Okay. Well, oh, that was a spicy, uh, spicy episode for yes. a spicy deck, huh? Thank you. I'm honored, and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, thank you for being on. Thank you for for partaking in these uh, lovely spikes. I think I'm gonna use this on, on a lot of breakfast foods nowadays. <laughs> Always love that one. Yeah, y'all, uh, y'all did great with those. This I won't be using for a long time. Uh, those, anyways. Thanks for uh, for putting up with us. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Uh, and of course, as always, I'm going to chug this milk now and uh, have a good one. Yeah.